Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and boy do I have a treat for you today. Starting 2024 off with a bang, and finally tackling one of the most imposing models to paint in the Middle Earth strategy battle game model range, the Balrog of Morgoth, a demon of the ancient world. That's right, today I'll be showing you step by step how to create a super effective fire effect for your Balrog, working with a slightly different way of painting by going from lighter to darker tones for all the quote unquote highlights, as fire is brighter at its source. I'll also be showing you how you can create a stunning and imposing looking Balrog with only a handful of colours. The main thing you'll need when painting this beast is patience. I assembled my Balrog with his characteristic sword, but the same techniques detailed here can be used for his whip if that's how you built him. Now I have worked my Balrog up from a chaos black undercoat. You can of course use a grey if you wish, but I found black was better as the main body of him is darker and easier to build up once you've got the fire effect in place. Well enough talking, brushes ready guys and let's get painting. Fire and Flame There's only really two to three areas of interest in the Balrog, and based on the nature of painting, there's no real reason to get all the base colours down first, so let's start with the flame. To start with the flames down the Balrog's back, over the base, the sword, mouth, eyes, and all the cracked areas over his back, thighs, and shoulders, were base coated using wraith bone. This will represent where the intensity of the fire is burning hottest as the flames get darker, the further they come off the source of fire. Now you want to apply this in several thin layers to try and get a nice smooth coverage over all these flames. The smoother and more consistent this layer is, the better the fire will look overall. Now I'm using wraith bone here as it will cover slightly easier than pure white and has a slightly warmer hue than the pure white wood. With the white coat in place, it's time to start gradually building up the colour and hues of the flame. To begin this, I applied a thin down shade of Cassandora Yellow all over the marked out flame areas. This will help establish an initial tone for the fire and guide the placement for the darker layers and highlights later on. I applied this slightly heavier to the areas that are further away from the main source of fire, areas like the shoulder blades, thighs and upper areas of all the flames where the fire will be less intense. Now for one of, but not the most time consuming part of this model, once the Cassandora shade was dry, I applied a layer all over the lava and flame using phalanx yellow, starting to gradually build this up, leaving the wraith bone and Cassandora shade showing in the recesses, focusing on all the areas between the leathery cracks and building this out again over the back and shoulders where the fire isn't burning quite as hot. The phalanx is a really bright hue so it will help reinforce the impression of fire burning super hot over this, well, fire demon. The next stage is going to be quite a slow process depending on how smooth you want the transition between the darker and lighter areas of fire to be. Adding Troll Slayer Orange into the Phalanx Yellow and slowly layering up all the fire and recess cracks, again working this more towards the areas furthest from the source of flame. I started with a rough 4 to 1 ratio mix of Phalanx Yellow to Troll Slayer Orange to begin with and with each subsequent pass added slightly more Troll Slayer to try and keep the blend as smooth and seamless as possible. As you can see, as I build up the orangey tones now, I've increased the concentration of Troll Slayer Orange in my mix with each pass, and I'm keeping my layers more targeted and focused, trying my best to replicate the feel and behaviour of actual fire. I am keeping my paint slightly on the thinner side, as the last thing I want is for unsightly, blotchy blemishes disrupting the smoothness of all this flame. Intermittent between layer glazes were also applied to help tie together all the layers and smooth out the white to orange transition a little bit more. I applied these with a heavily diluted Lamentus Yellow, but a heavily thinned down glaze of Flash Gitch Yellow or again a Phalax will work just as well here. With these, try to avoid them pooling too much to minimise blemishes over the fire. 
Continue building up the flames and lava cracks gradually, adding more and more troll slayer and as many glazes as you feel necessary until you're applying the final layer using pure troll slayer orange. As you can see here, I'm focusing this now on the upper areas of fire and focusing more on the neck and shoulder lava cracks as well as the outer areas of all the thigh fire, fire? and the edges of the blade in preparation for the more reddish highlights. Now this is optional, but you can soften the transition between the orange and the following red highlights. You can apply a shade of Caribou Crimson just to the upper half of all the flames. Again, this isn't necessary, but I've found that it just helps tie together the brighter oranges with the darker red tones I'm going to be dry brushing with next. Again, keeping this diluted so as not to overly stain the flames so far. Don't worry, we're almost there. The highlights were applied a little bit less precisely. I applied a dry brush to the upper flames and shoulder blades now with a 3 to 1 mix of Troll Slayer Orange and Wasdaka Red. The dry brush nature of this highlight will give a slightly smoky look to the highlights and as long as you're not overly heavy with the application will reinforce the blend between the yellows through to the reds. As with the oranges, you can continue adding Wasdaka Red in as many increments as you wish for as many dry brush highlights as you feel is necessary. I found that working up to a 50-50 or 1 to 1 split of Troll Slayer and Wasdaka was optimal to achieve the effect that I wanted, but you can push this as far as you want depending on how dark you want the flame to be. Just remember, keep each dry brush layer lighter and less intense than the one that came before it. The very final dry brush was applied with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Wasdaka Red and Abaddon Black, and this was literally just applied to the very tips of all the big and more prominent flames. This just represents where the smoke is licking off the tips of all the fire, and with that, your flame and fire is finally done. The word fire is now starting to sound very weird to me. Balrog's main body. With the fire now finished, I went around the whole Balrog again and re-blocked out any of the details and skin that were covered with my yellows and oranges. This includes going back around the horns, teeth, face, ridges down the arms and carefully picking out the individual raised lumps of leathery cracked skin over the back, shoulders and thighs. This will take some time as I don't want to bleed onto the recessed flames, but when you're done you can really see he's starting to come together, finally. The whole bow rock then was given a layer with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Avadon Black and Skaven Black Dinge, again being careful not to clip onto the fire but making sure every nook and cranny of the bow rock receives this layer. This includes the cracked skin, legs, underbelly, tails, wings, the whole lot. With this now in place, I applied a mid to heavy dry brush over the whole bow rock now with the 1 to 1 ratio mix of Abaddon Black and Skaven Black Dinge. Using a medium dry brush instead of a larger one here, which does take a bit more time admittedly, but gives you much more control when it comes to not clipping the fire, particularly over the back and on the base. Don't worry about the recessed flame, the paint will hit the skin cracks first and shouldn't interfere with the recesses.
Continue building up the dry brush layers, keeping each one lighter as you go until you reach a dry brush using pure scale and plug dinge. Here I'm using a large dry brush as I'm working this slightly further away from the main body of flames. I felt that the crack skin over the back and thighs deserved a little bit more attention. Again, this is optional, but I feel it really helped the finished look of the model. Each of these scales was very carefully given an edge highlight with a one-to-one -one mix of Scaven Black Dinge and Carrot Stone. This just makes them pop a little bit more and gives the impression of heightened illumination from the fire surrounding each segment. At this stage as well, I went over the arms, legs and wings and filled in some extra cracks in the skin with a small, targeted line of phalanx yellow, just to add a little extra detail to these areas and give the impression of the fire cracking and breaking through the hide of the barrel. Over the wings you can do as many of these as you wish here, depending on what you feel looks good. These were then all gone over with a heavily diluted glaze of blood letters just to tie them into the rest of the fire. They don't need as extensive a process as the main fire, so this should be sufficient. If you don't have blood letters, white lacquer red reduced to a glaze will be equally as effective. A final super light dry brush was applied over the whole Balrog now using pure Carrack Stone. This will just pick up on the most prominent skin and body details and give the impression of cracked aged stone being underlit by the intense burning flame. Quite a lot of the Balrog's main torso is very smooth with a lot of curves so try to be as careful as you possible here and not overload your brush. Horns, Claws and Teeth The horns, claws and teeth were given a base coat now with a 50-50 mix of Scaven Black Dinge and Steel Legion Drab. Now I did neglect the teeth here at this point by accident, so make sure you don't do this when it comes to your barrel. roll. A shade was applied to all these areas next using Agrax Earth Shade, letting this seep into the recesses, particularly along the horns. Once this was dry, a layer was applied by adding Cadian Flesh Tone into the previous base coat mix. Here I'm just segmenting all the individual plates of the horns, leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the deepest recesses. The Cadian balances the tone of the Steel Legion and also helps build up the warmth over the face. Continue adding Cadian Flesh Tone into the mix to an approximate 50-50 split and start creating some sharpness for framing each individual segment now. This includes framing the teeth and claws again to reinforce sharpness and ferocity. A highlight was then applied by adding Kislev Flesh into the mix, again at a rough 50-50 split to the layer mix and further pushing the sharpness over the horns with tight controlled application. Finally, a dot highlight was applied to the corners of the horns and tips of the teeth and claws with pure Kislev flesh.
base. Now I don't often go into basing anymore in videos, but as a Balrog has a special sculpted one, this is how I painted mine. The whole base was given a base coat using Mechanica Standard Grey, again being careful not to overlap on the flame on the base itself. A reasonably heavy shade was then applied using null oil, letting the sink in between the grooves and recesses of all the stonework. Once this was dry, a heavy dry brush was applied using Dawnstone. Finally, a lighter dry brush was applied over the top using Pallid Witch Flash. There are a number of shields and weapons on the base here. These I simply picked out with Lead Belcher and gave a toning wash with Null Oil. There we are, the Balrog of Morgoth, Durin's Bane and Fella of Grey Wizards is finally finished and ready to wreak havoc on the board. Such an imposing model and a really stunning centerpiece to any Moria army. Now I have this painted and the journey of my ring bearer can now continue and I'm not really fancying their chances, I must tell you. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's monster video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. And until next time guys, take care and as always, happy hobbying.